All right, welcome to the risk meeting for December 1st. This will be our last risk meeting for this year. Uh, Chaos is taking time off until early January, um, just for our mental well being, as it were. Try to give people some holiday time and, and whatnot. Um, one of the things I brought up for um, to the top because we didn't get to it last time was uh, I had a conversation with um, David Wheeler at uh, the member summit. And I thought it, um, you know, well, like, and, can, and this is part of what we've, we've talked about this before in this group. What is our intersection with um, OSSF or, or what, they call it somewhere else, something else, OSSF, they call it OSSF, but I've, I've heard it called like something not entirely acronymic. Like Anyhow, open SSF. That's open okay. SSF. That's the, yeah. Thank you, Renisha. That, I, I knew there was like another thing that David called it, um, but I couldn't remember what it was. Um, and the idea of just, you know, trying to identify what are the concerns that people have around risk um, in their in their environments right now, without the assumption that, um, I mean, perhaps with some questions making you know being directly about security, but I think security is of course getting a lot of attention right now. But I, there is also there are also other risk fast factors and trying to get um, some kind of a, a survey of people um, put together. And my thought was a contributor survey and maybe separately an ASPO survey. And this is just ripping off a brief conversation that David and I had um, the last time, but it, I mean, the, like the Linux Foundation has done surveys of its membership before and made them widely available. And um, they have teams of people like in the Linux research group who I, whom I think would help us um, put this together. Yeah, but I don't know if others think this is a good idea or if this is just crap David Wheeler and I talk about. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'd love to get a sense for what your goals would be for these things. I, I run a lot of surveys and I'm also very cognizant of survey fatigue that's happening, especially now that there is an LF research group and there are more surveys, there's just mm -hmm. more surveys in general. So I don't want to necessarily add to the fire unless we have a very strong use case that is not achievable in any of the other current projects. Like, I think, I don't know, I think if depending on the focus of it, if it's OSPO, could we tack on to the to-do group survey? Because we know that happens annually. Um, if it's separate from that, then, then I would love to work with the LF just because they'll have a better sense of scheduling as well as potentially aligned initiatives. Um, I know we're being recorded, so I'll use my words wisely here. Um, I have not really seen a public roadmap from them. So I think it's hard to know up front without just reaching um, out to someone like Hillary and just saying, hey, oh. Does this align with anything you're working on? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think, I think I think reaching out to Hillary and seeing if um, that's aligned with anything she's working on is a is a, a reasonable reasonable first step. I I think when does the annual to do group survey go out? Is is that already done for like the next twelve months already? We'll look it up, but I don't, I know they released the data at Dublin. So I, I feel like they're probably preparing for next year, but it's not out yet. Yeah. I can find this. Is the, is the, I guess one question would be, is, is the report they released in Dublin publicly available somewhere? Yeah. Perhaps instead of looking to do a new survey, we could take a brief look at that. Do you happen to have a link? Oh, that is not correct. Please remove that. <laughs> I can't. Oh. <laughs> I, I think it just won't work for you. Um, it's an internal link because that was attached to my thing. So there we go. Um, 
so the results of the survey like aren't in their Slack channel or anything. Uh, this was I oh, just this posted was, a link. Thank you. I posted the wrong one. It looks like I found the recruiting email. Um, the last time I reviewed it, there were no risk questions. Like they seem to be more focused on maturity, function, priority, goals. Um, See if I can and like organizational right. context. <laughs> so like, I don't, like I'm curious again, like I feel like I want to come back to the original question, which is when you chat about this with David, was there a specific goal you were trying to achieve through a survey? Yeah, I, um, the, go the goal that we were trying to achieve is like, we, we talked about, um, you know, that open SSF it has a very specific focus and that there are many other flavors of risk. And because of the software supply chain security concerns, security as a risk factor has gotten a lot of public attention. And I think we've done, I think we've done good work in this group, particularly around our identification of different dependencies and licensing risks uh, that, that, that we've characterized the other kinds of risks that exist in open source work well. I think my, the intention from my perspective is to, to see if there perhaps exists a resource, in which case we wouldn't need to do a survey, or if there's another survey that we can tack on to where we can get some feedback from people. And, and probably, I'm, as I think about it, I put contributors on there, but I'm, I'm probably, more, I think, in my own mind, more concerned with, you know, what are the concerns that OSPOs have with regards to risk? Um, and what are the concerns that, and, and I think I would separate OSPOs and really LF members who are a combination of people with different levels of leadership and responsibility and people with contributing focuses. Um, so like, what are their concerns about risk in general? Because I think the the firms producing technology and producing open source as part of their business model have different interests than a firm that might consume a lot of open source, which is where I think there are an increasing number of OSPOs. So I think the idea of an OSPO, this is just my perception and tell me if I'm off. OSPOs I think originated from technology companies who produce a lot of open source software. And I think the need for OSPOs has bled over into firms whose principal products involve the assembly of particular open source projects, not necessarily um, producing open source software directly. And so that in part is why I hypothesize that to-do group has grown. And really the fundamental nature of an OSPO, I think, has changed over the last couple of years. But maybe I'm not at all right about that. I welcome your feedback on those thought, random thoughts. I can only speak from the perspective of like, working at a place that is, we're not, we don't produce a lot of uh, projects that are open source, but we use a lot of open source packages and um, platforms in building. And um, frequently the questions we get with regards to open source metrics are around, should I, how can I evaluate this um, uh, this thing? Should I, you know, should I adopt it? Uh, can you recommend some guardrails or you know metrics I should look out for? Should I move away from this thing because it might be deprecated? And uh, we are very interested in uh, these sorts of risk metrics from a perspective of this is something that is maintainable and I can re rely on for the long term. So that does seem aligned to what the risk dashboard is trying to achieve. Um, I will say, having been to a couple of their meetings, it is really trying to center on security, which I know at the beginning there was some debate of a broader interpretation of risk versus just security. Um, and the broader interpretation would include more of the how is this being maintained metrics in terms of say 
population distribution, retention, growth, and kind of understanding the health of the community versus just the health of the project. And the, I mean, they're interrelated clearly, but um, the, the metrics that I saw that were bubbling toward the top of that were some of the more established security focused ones like scorecard, best practice. Um, some of, there was like light version of that, but I almost think that that's, it's, I mean, that's aligned to the open SSF a bit more is to have more of a security lens where I think in terms of the questions you listed, and I wrote this in the notes, Renisha, I do think that their goal is to help people make those calls um, in terms of, see, looking at the, the security badging program, there were more assessment questions that related to practices that were supported by the community versus the current state of that project. Because um, there was a big debate of this seems more project centric versus version centric. So is this version secure is a different question than is this project actively using best practices. <laughs> um, and so it's more geared toward this sort of long term evaluation of whether or not this project is going to keep working for you versus whether or not this package is working for you kind of thing. Um, so I think in that regard, we are gonna have more overlap with that group if those are the focus areas that we settle in on. Um, Sean, I know you're looking at the, the older doc. They were working from a mock-up at this point. They, I think we have a meeting tomorrow so we can see if they've made any headway on what they're including. But the last one I version I saw did have that focus. And it was pretty much the same of what David had presented to us before. Oh my. No, this is the Open Source Software Foundation, which I don't <laughs> think is the OSF. Open oh, you want the open part. I forget that too, but open SSF. Open SSF. Oh, that's probably why they use open SSF since the domain ossf.org. Um, and that's, uh, this is probably why David's not on the call because December 5th is not that far away and Japan is. Um, um, and you're looking for the dashboard, right? I think it's metrics.openssf.org. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah, so thank much. you. I must be generating data in real time because it's spinning. It is and it isn't. <laughs> that was one of the pieces of feedback I gave for them last week or two weeks ago. Because they're one of the, like I looked at the Kubernetes dashboard. One thing is recorded monthly and a lot, one of them is recorded in. 2017. So clearly not up to date, but it's because that was the data that it had access to. Jump straight to the dashboard. still a mock-up so it doesn't have data for everything which is why they listed a couple of packages on the preload page oh okay you do curl as well. uh, okay <clears throat> okay i think david did show us this last time actually yeah that I I feel like, Sean, the more you're talking about this, the more I see some overlap with the meeting we had a few hours ago um, with the OSPO, because if it is OSPO centric in terms of how OSPOs are thinking about risk, um, Renisha, we just have the newly formed OSPO working group, which we're trying to have more connectivity between the to-do group. Um, and I think that that working group was created mostly as a way to figure out how to work with the to-do group as well in terms of creating things that were both useful for OSPOs, but as well as how do we work with to do between chaos and to do. Um, and one of the things that we came to was trying to understand how we can sort of socialize ideas and get feedback from the to do community as a way to vet if our proposals 
are actually applicable to a broad audience versus just the people that join our meetings. So I think, I don't know, Sean, I feel like this would put in that category of whether or not, like coming back to your first question of how to get more questions or feedback. Like, I think if anything, we could try to, we haven't really developed a mechanism yet. We were mostly talking about ways to do that. And I think this mechanism could be for connecting with open to SSI. Do. Oh, this do, do yeah, yeah, yeah. specifically because I do think in terms of the relationship to OSPO, OSPOs and risk assessments. Um, the Open SSF one, I think. I mean, I've been joining some of their calls, but I think at this point they have a pretty clear directive that I think we're there to give feedback on metrics. So I'm, I'm happy to keep doing that. You said the to do group folks are in the OSPO working group or um, a couple, yeah. Okay. We had we had a quite quite a wide call today. There's a lot um, of Microsoft folks in there today. Microsoft, GitHub, Amazon, but like mostly people from OSPOs. Um, but I know like Ashley Wolf from GitHub does do a lot of to-do group work. So she was kind of serving as our to-do group liaison in terms of saying sharing a little bit more about their structure and ways and groups that are easy, like more easier to engage with versus just like posting in the general slack of 1800 people. <laughs> Cause it's a little bit overwhelming. Yeah, it really, it really is. Like I think, so isn't, are all of these from the scorecard? Yeah. These, um, those are three different things that they've created. Their scorecard, the best practices badge program, and project criticality, which were three separate initiatives that came through the Open SSF, as far as I understand it. Okay, so, like, in, so they're doing this by pulling, basically analyzing repos. Um, the bad, do you, can you, do you, can, can you like, okay, this, the scorecard I know is automated. Um, the badging I, program is not. It is like something that you apply for and certify with that I believe has an expiration date attached to it. So I can look that up. Okay. And what about project criticality? Is there automation there? It looks like, these look like automatable things. I think so, yeah. I mean, it, um, if, if, so one, one way to think about this relation, so getting the, so I guess let me stay on one topic at a time, getting feedback from, um, the OSPO working groups around risk related things. I think, you know, like I suggested in the OSPO meeting, we, we just want to get a general idea of what their concerns are and what they're trying to measure right now. But now sitting in the risk meeting, I think from this working group's perspective, I'd kind of like to ask some specific questions about when, when, when they're assessing risk, what is it that they are assessing? Like I suspect licenses and dependencies, which are things that we already cover, are, are on that list. And I suggest I suspect that these security things are would also be um, part of a list. But significantly more difficult to um, make I mean uh, they've done it already. I'm not sure what your question is. No, I'm not sure what my question is either. I, I think, um, you know, it almost, I'm just trying to think of like, what would be the questions that, you know, the intention is to understand how, how risk is assessed in an open, you know, in open source program offices. And sharing something like, here's an example of the open SSF, um, dashboard for security and 
uh, here are some examples of chaos metrics that address things like licensing and dependencies. You know, the, and the other things that we characterize as risk metrics. What's missing? Um, what's most important? Like if I, if I was gonna ask to-do group folks questions about risk, I think showing them, an, like instead of asking them open-ended questions, I might show them what is available today and then ask them well, this technically isn't available today, so I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. It's still okay. Like, it's this is what they're they're building that. So maybe it would be a question like if you had this, yeah, like if you had this, and, and then if you had license s bombs and other things, um, which of those things are the most valuable to you? You might also ask because. This is uh, a lot of information in the dashboard. It's great, but someone who sees this is just gonna say, yes, I find all of it useful. And maybe understanding what they're using it for can help us figure out the gaps. So, you know, you have a question about maybe longevity, long-term, or if this, is the project still active? That's like one of the, the things they wanna track. How would you do that with this dashboard and which metrics would they pull out and maybe what else is missing? Maybe it shows, uh, I think it showed monthly cadence for that first bar, but maybe they wanted something a little bit more the yearly cadence or something like that. But I think talking through their use cases of uh, questions they want to answer tied to the metrics, can you get that from the metrics that are available? What else would you like to see to answer that question? Would um, mm -hmm. build a complete picture, I think, for us. I mean, I, I like that, Renish, because I do feel like the dashboard is designed for a snap view, not really to answer any questions. Like, I think I struggle with the active contribution piece too, because they're not actually defining it. <laughs> and you can look at how they're counting it, but it's a very myopic view of how to count it. And it's like, if you, if that really is the most important thing for you, of whether or not this project is being actively maintained, then you need to track a few more things. And so I think I kind of like the idea of instead focusing it on like the the actual, the thing you're trying to address from a risk perspective versus the dashboard, I think is, is just kind of like, it's the snap view. Like if you just want like a quick red, green, blue, red, green call, I don't know, like, is this mostly green? Okay, it should be easy enough to do, but in reality, some organizations might be more or less sensitive to specific issues. Um, I mean, I also see this missing things as well. <laughs> or things that we don't really care about. Like, do we care about watchers? No, it's just that was just part of the, the criticality score because that's looking at industry relevance, not necessarily like relevance to you. And so I think that this kind of, I like that they're trying to reuse things that they've already made and that people use already because I know scorecard's really popular, but at the same time, it's not, it's not a best fit thing because the other two things weren't really created with that purpose in mind. Um, so I think I like the idea of maybe starting with those questions. And then I think, um, I know Sean, at least in our last meeting, we were talking about how we would approach a risk model. And I think that is, is more aligned to the model, like a more well-rounded view of what risk is, regardless of what metrics we have already, how we start framing risk and the questions that we would want to know. I have a take on this that I'm presenting next week for the record. <laughs> oh, cool. Where at? Um, the uh, New York City FinOS Linux event. Cool. Uh, yeah, I thought it might be a fun topic for the financial services group. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah and, like, I have a big slide in there that's just like, <laughs> this is not a security talk. <laughs> Um, I mostly, there's enough materials around security assessments and topics that are focused on security that this is meant to address the other elements of risk um, associated with using and engaging in open source. So um, I'm just noticing Renisha's post from seven minutes ago about the, so is open S, so the, the best practices core infrastructure program Oh, you had questions about the um, 
what were the best practice uh, badging that second section, that's their yeah. criteria. And I guess it has to be renewed or assessed periodically. So is this, so d there was previously a CNCF best practices badging program. That's separate from this? Yeah, I just wonder if it is this now. Because I did, I went through the CNCF best practices badge for Augur like years ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's now OS Open SSF best practices passing. Hmm. So I I did this in twenty you know, geez uh, three years ago, when it was called something else. Um. So that is the same thing as the what used to be the CNCF best practices badge. So like um, we actually show this data in Augur already, like whether or not you're passing. Um, we don't go down to the detail of, of these specific categories, um, but you can see, you know, we're, we're badged at passing. <clears throat> And there are in um, in my work with with Augur, I can say, um, like when a company gives me ten thousand repos or three thousand repos or whatever to scan, very very few projects have been through this badging program. Like the percentage is less than one percent of of any given firm's um, projects of concern. Um, so. It's not a criticism. It's it's just uh, this looks great, but the number of projects that have been badged is very small. Uh, okay, it's well, it's about twice what it was the last time I looked. Um, it's five thousand two hundred eighty-five total projects um, have gone through it. Which is, um, you know, obviously not a. And what and I guess when people hand me ten thousand repos and like one percent of them are badged, that tells me that it's not. It's not going to be data that's available for most organizations. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. It's just interesting. As a, this might be a silly question. Um, as a like a project maintainer or contributor owner, what do I get out of uh, silver, gold, or I forget the other tier badge? Just, Does that just get me more adapters? Passing, or? Um, it's, a, it's a signal that you care about security. So I'll be curious if the badge. Oh, yeah. So like I never even noticed that this changed from to open SSF best practices, but yeah, we have the badge in our README, so it um, it uh, gives me. I suppose it gives somebody who might consider using this project um, some level that at least the project maintainers care enough about getting the badge. Um, I don't know what it means beyond that because the percentage of projects badged is relatively small. So I think it's a, it's a good thing that a project is badged if it is, but in most cases, they, the project, the maintainers don't go through the, and it's, it takes like two hours to go through the form, uh, and complete it. Some things are automated, some things are manual.
I mean, I think from the case of the company evaluation, I think seeing a signal that the maintainer cares is typically positive <laughs> uh, in the sense of, I feel like even in risk, we had looked at other indicators that things were being well maintained, like how quickly are bugs or defects being resolved because we couldn't look at security. So we were looking at more action-based indicators versus this is more activity-based indicator. I guess that's not really a great way to split them, but more like this is something that maintainers can proactively do to showcase their commitment to ensuring that this project is up to best practice standards, however they are. Um, I think the fact that it isn't renewed or needed to be renewed is somewhat like it's one of those things where like maybe this passed five years ago, but is it still passing? Like I don't quite know what that process is. So I think that's my that's my skepticism toward it. Cause I think as an original signal, it makes sense to me, but these other, all these other metrics are based on real time data in a way that can help you make an assessment based on what's happening right now in the current group of people. Yeah, also because, because, you know, it's like, you look at my, well, I mean, I, I did this three years ago and I still have the badge. So does that still count? I mean, I mean it should, assuming you're doing all the same things, but like say yeah. someone else that's not Sean took over this project, would they still be doing all these things? Yeah. And most, most of the things are, are like rules that are set up on GitHub or automations, like automated builds and things like that. Um, so the, certainly the things that are automated can be continuously checked but I don't, I don't know if they are. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, but I have a limited knowledge of this. Yeah. So if I, so if I wrote down framing risk and the questions we want to know. Uh, So one, one question I have is, is it worthwhile? So, so I don't know. I'm not like in my mind, I'm like, okay, these are very useful. In some way we should catalog them um, as adjacent risk factors in chaos or have pointers to these tools in chaos perhaps in the form, for example, of a metric that talks about the project criticality, the best practices badge, which we actually do have a metric for. It's just not called the OSSF best practices badge anymore. Um, and, and point people to OSSF scorecard and have like a met. So since we're kind of a taxonomy of metrics, it might make sense to reference these things that OS, uh, Open SSF has developed as, as useful indicators, like a kind of a endorsement like this, you know, if you're evaluating risk, the, and we've already done this for the best practices program, we have a metric for that. These are some other things that would be useful um, for you to understand. And then somebody who's looking for an overall taxonomy, which is, you know, kind of what chaos has been, and I think continues to be to some extent, they have all that information in one place. What do you think? I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing to have cross reference to existing tooling and approaches. I think something like risk is very subjective. So having general tools available is just one point of commonality. I think the flavor that we would add is that this is just one example <laughs> and that you might want to tweak these things for your own cases. I do think actually the project scorecard has the ability to change weightings though, in terms of like, if you are more sensitive to one of the particular elements in the evaluation, you can, I think you can tweak that um, to say, give it a stronger weighting in your own criteria or ranking. Over here, you mean? You can in this dashboard. I'm saying in the actual project. Yeah, you uh, can not wait. For 
criticality, but for scorecard. Okay. So you can, you can weight criticalities differently. I think that's, I mean, that's how they describe it. It's just, it's a tool. So you can use the tool, but you can also make it work for you mm -hmm. in ways that I think, I'm not sure how many people actually take that next step. I think they, a lot of people probably just start with what's in there because it's a starting point. Mm -hmm. I do, I don't know, I feel like there's always the risk piece of this, which is the more prescriptive we are with defining risk, the more, I don't want people to be overly reliant that these are all the things that you need to care about and that could leave you blind to a risk that you haven't considered. Um, it's a separate point. Um... Well, I think it's separate from say the goal of that dashboard, which again, it's, if we think about it as helping someone make a call in the moment, but I think, I don't know, I think coming back to what we would want to do within chaos, I'd love to have a broader view of it. Cause I don't think that there are more risks and considerations that haven't, haven't been showcased in there. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Like the I think the things that we like I said uh, earlier, I think the ones that come to mind because are licensing and and um, the production of an S bomb and there was one other one. Oh, dependencies. You know the work we did around dependencies. I still think um, is pretty relevant. So. I mean, just to go off of, if you were at the, the Linus and Dirk conversation in Dublin, Linus's biggest concern with the Linux kernel is that there's gonna be a toxic personality that kicks out a bunch of people based on their actions alone. I'm not sure how you quantify that, but just thinking about what potentially could cause this project to fail. And that was the thing that he was primarily concerned about. That a person who is toxic but making critical contributions would be removed and that would hurt the stability of the project. Or they would cause people to co not come back, like basically yeah. break trust and collaboration within a highly productive community. And so he, he was more concerned around the people dynamics of ensuring that you're facilitating a productive, trusting, inclusive environment that isn't gonna lead to people feeling like they wanna leave. Um, which I'm not really sure how you would assess risk to that because I think that can get a bit sticky. Yeah. Um, but it's just an example of like, that's not something that's in here. And it's not necessarily something that you're going to see in any of these types of dashboards. Like you can see that they have a code of conduct. And I think that's in, I'm assuming that's in one of the best practices one. It is, yeah. So just like, do you have a code of conduct and a way to enforce that, but like, as to whether or not those things are going well, there's no way to really know. Yeah. You can also look at, say like retention or um, what's the word? Exfiltration, people when people leave. Yeah, uh, um, uh, turnover. I turnover, think. yeah. Like if scores of people start leaving, that is a problem. But then mm -hmm. you're looking more at like population dynamics, which I think those types of metrics are less visible. And I think they are connected to some of the points you made earlier. So I think that that's what I see missing from this. But it, I think there are also more things. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot missing and um, I agree. And it, we're at the end of time and I have to go teach a class, so. <laughs> well, thanks for, thanks for taking you through the conversation. I guess we'll pick back up in January. Yeah, yeah. Happy everyone yeah Enjoy. well if um if i may decide to reach out to david and um hillary and um the uh working group for ospos and see if um sort of start to frame these questions asynchronously okay all right sure and you're all you're all welcome to do that as well i'm just stating my intention but i someone else does it first. Well, that's I'm perfectly gonna... fine with me start in this forum. So I have a session next week. Um, mm -hmm. and it's, I'm assuming a much smaller event. So I'm hoping that people just tell me what they think afterward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, like, here's some ideas around how to think about non-security based risk. What am I missing? 
please poke holes in what I presented. And so I'm, I'll start in that forum, see if I get any interesting conversations or ideas that I haven't considered. Because I think a lot of the things that I've been thinking about are already available in two hours. I'm also happy to take the presentation to this group of you guys want to shred it for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, pretty I basic, think. but I know we, we're out of time, so I can't yeah. take you through it now. But yeah, yeah. I'd be happy to hear about it or look at it at some point. So um, thank you, everyone. I got to go. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. bye.